So we have DNS, our DNS server installed, and we've created a forward and a reverse lookup zone. Now let's talk about creating DNS resource records, which is kind of where all the work actually gets done. So we're going to go to Tools and DNS again. And I'm going to create a for, a, an entry in my forward lookup zone. Now, remember, the forward lookup zone resolves names to IP addresses. So I'm going to right click and I can create a handful of new records here. So we have a new host record, A or quad A. A is an A record is a standard lookup record, a host record for IPv4. Quad A, same thing for IPv6. A new alias or C name, C name is canical name. So that's an alias record for another host. Mail exchanger, new domain, new other types of records. The A, C name, MX are our most common ones, but we can create other new records here. So let's create a new host record. And I'm going to use, let's do, I'm going to create one for, let's do a Bassett Web. I'm just making one up here. So Bassett Web is going to be the name. Now notice I only put in the um, host portion of the name. It automatically appends Bassett.local. So I don't have to put that in. If, uh, if I do a full name, then it will use the full name instead of the Bassett.local. And then I'm going to create an IP address for it. And we're going to resolve that to 192.168.5. Let's do 20. Now, this right here, create an associated PTR record. The PTR record is the record in the reverse lookup zone, which is why we create the forward lookup zone and the uh, reverse lookup zone before we start adding records. So if I choose create the associated PTR record, click add host, the host uh, record was successfully added. I'm going to click done. And so here we see Bassett-Web is a host record that revolves to 192.168.5.20. If I expand my reverse lookups, you can see I have 192.168.5.20 has a PTR record that points to bassett-web.bassett.local. Okay, I now have a standard A record and a uh, reverse lookup for it as well. Let me show you another type of entry. So I created Bassett Web, and that's going to be the name of my web server. However, I don't want everybody to use bassettweb.bassett.local to get to my website. I want www. So that I would create using a CNAME record. Now, there's a lot of reasons to do CNAME records for common things like that, email or www or something like that. There's a lot of reasons to use CNAME records rather than using actual machine names. And one of them is just flexibility. And if this server goes down or if I update it and I want to move the site to another server, all I have to do is update my CNAME record and it just makes life a little bit easier. And that's one of the big reasons to do it. So let's right click and do a new alias CNAME. Now for this one, my alias is going to be www. And then instead of giving it an IP address, I'm going to give it the fully qualified domain name of the target. Or I can browse, which will find my forward lookup zone, Bassett.local. I want Bassett Web. And so then I can browse through and find it and hit OK. So now I have www, that's an alias or C name to Bassett Web. So now if somebody goes for, looks for www.bassett.local and they get redirected to this web server, this web server will look up www, find that it's an alias for Bassett Web, look up Bassett Web, find the associated IP address, and send that to the client. All right, let me do a couple of more records here. Oh, by the way, notice when we did that, it didn't create a, a PTR record for us. The PTR records are typically only for hosts. So I'm going to create a new host again, and this one I'm going to call Bassett Mail. And that's going to be 192.168.5.21. Because this is a host record, I'm going to create the associated PTR record as well. So I'm going to click Add Host, and that adds it in successfully.
and click done. So now I have my mail server. Now that actually doesn't become a mail server. Let me rephrase that. That won't be recognized as a mail server unless we have an associated MX record for it. That's what MX stands for is mail exchanger. So I'm going to right click and create a new mail exchanger or MX record. And the host is going to be, let's just call, call it mail, mail.basset.local. And then the fully qualified domain name. And again, I can browse or I can type in the whole thing, basset-mail.basset.local. Now, you'll also see a mail server priority here. So you can create multiple mail exchanger records, and we do this for redundancy. So if I have more than one mail server, which if I want redundancy for my email servers, then yeah, that makes a lot of sense. So I create, can create a couple of different mail servers, and then I can create an MX priority. And what will happen is when there is a request for an MX record for my domain, my uh, DNS server will reply with the one with the... Uh, higher priority. So I hit OK. That creates my MX record. And you'll see here Mail Exchanger and it's priority 10. And there is my resolution to Bassett Mail. OK, let's take a look. One last thing. Let's look at other types of records. So there are a bunch of them that we can create here. As you scroll through, you see there is a whole bunch. Now, we've talked about some of the primary ones. Alias or a CNAME record is one that we will commonly use. A host is one that we will commonly use. A mail exchanger is one that we will commonly use. Another one that we will deal with is going to be a... NS record. Now, an NS record is a name server record. And notice as we go through here, notice you're not seeing an NS record. And the reason we don't see an NS record is because those are created kind of automatically when we create another uh, name server. Okay, so that gives you a quick breakdown of how we can build our resource records for our DNS servers, specifically for something that's going to be a public-facing server. Now, one of the things with Active Directory, if you're doing an Active Directory integrated zone, which is what you need when you're running domain services, you will notice a couple of things happen. One is you will notice names automatically populate here. And that's because Active Directory integrated zones allow dynamic updates. Remember, we created this as a public facing zone, so we don't allow dynamic updates. But an Active Directory integrated zone does allow secure dynamic updates. And so all of the devices in your Active Directory domain will automatically update their names in DNS in the Active Directory integrated DNS zone. You'll also notice a couple of other little subfolders or subdomains uh, down here below your main domain. And you'll see a bunch of service records there. And those are automatically created by Active Directory domain controllers when they register the services they have with DNS. And then clients will use those uh, SRV records, their service records. Uh, we'll use those records to find services that they need on the Active Directory domain. Okay, there we go. We have some DNS records, zone resource records created.